This is the Maserati concept demonstration that we built for CES uh, in January, this, this past January. Effectively, what this is, is our vision of the integrated cockpit uh, moving forward, not necessarily the future car, but what, what we see as what's coming in the next couple of years as far as uh, the driving experience is concerned. Um, let's start with an overview of what actually is in the system. Uh, at first, we have six screens in the car, uh, two on the sides for the side view mirrors, the rear view, where the traditionally rear view mirror would be, the digital instrument cluster, infotainment, and one that'll be hard to get on camera, but there's also a rear seat control screen back oh, here as okay. well. Um, what we want to do with all of these sensors, there's also uh, 10 ultrasonic sensors in this vehicle as well to um, do things like uh, object detection and collision avoidance, things of that nature. Um, let's start with the, the cameras that are being leveraged for the rear view. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the, the two side view uh, screens are uh, held by, or are, just, are pulling data from two side mount cameras. And then this one is pulling from a high mount camera in the shark fin on the top of the car. One really interesting thing that we want to do is the little demonstration here. Here is a, a, an approximation of the view you would get traditionally in this vehicle with the standard mirrors in the vehicle. Same with the side view mirror as well. The, the view is a lot smaller. Um, simply by leveraging some optics, we can really increase the field of vision uh, to really see what's going on in the back of the vehicle. Now, one other really cool thing is there's another camera. When we put the car into reverse, I'm not going to put the car into reverse because that would be bad, but let's simulate putting the car into reverse. I also have a low mount, a bumper mount camera that allows you to, again, see even more of what's happening in the behind the vehicle. If you take a shot of the side view camera, or the mirror, or screen, as I go in and out of reverse, we actually tilt the image so you actually have the proper uh, view of the blind spots while you're in reverse. I'm going to start, I'm going to go into kind of the digital instrument cluster now. QNX um, has been in the auto industry for the last 15 years and we really pride ourselves on the platform that we've created from an operating system perspective all the way up the stack. We have the ability to run safety critical systems as well as infotainment systems kind of on the same CPU, on the same silicon, and really still be able to guarantee that the safety system will get the CPU cycles that it requires. Um, this particular instrument cluster, we've designed it to either work in conjunction with, it, with an infotainment system or be completely standalone. So we can have everything from having the navigation right inside the instrument cluster to driver information to media, basically allowing um, the driver to have access to the information they want in a context that makes sense. In this situation, we have a media view, but at the same time, we're also have, we also have the safety critical elements still in the instrument cluster, like the speedo, like the tack, what gear I'm in, that type of stuff. Um, again, it's a more cohesive experience on the instrument cluster. Moving over to the infotainment side of things. Um, what we wanted to do with the infotainment is create an experience that isn't super distracting uh, as far as interactions are concerned with the, for the driver. There are two big things that you typically do as a driver. Uh, obviously, the first is media. So the idea of having one big area that is just a, an interactive button, quote unquote, where it doesn't matter where I hit in the context of this, it's a play pause button. Similarly, if I wanted to switch tracks, it's a simple, it's not two fingers, it's not weird gestures. All I want is to be able to reach down with my non-driving hand and swipe it or stop it. Um, and that view, is that, that, that media context exists no matter what I'm doing elsewise in the vehicle. So I always have that media selection and I always have a top view of the, of the Navi because Navi is the second thing that pretty much as a driver, that's what you're going to use in the vehicle. Um, this particular, as I said, this car was built for CES, so the maps are Las Vegas, unfortunately, but um, we want to have a very nice, very rich map experience. We can't be that distracting, so, you know, just the white buildings with the, with the, with the dark background. Um, one interesting thing that we've done is we've taken the eHorizons information from Electrobit Street Director, and that's the Navi system that's, that's integrated here, and we've, we're pushing that information to the instrument cluster for the driver. So in this, if you look at the instrument cluster now, um, you'll see speed warnings. So 30 miles an hour is the speed limit for this particular road, and you'll see that we're going over it significantly. Um, one interesting piece, if we keep the camera on there, um, when we hit a curve in the road, you're going to get curvature of the road warnings as well. We also installed a light bar, and that's uh, integrated into the experience as well. Um, basically, I don't necessarily even want to pull my, the driver's eyes off of the road 
even if there's a curvature of the road warning, I want to, my eyes are up, I see it's red or yellow or green, so I can actually keep the, my eyes on the road and at the same time be alerted to the fact that there is something coming and it's that direction, whether it's an obstruction or a curve or whatever the case may be. It's pulling that enhanced map information and not necessarily displaying it on the map, but in the cluster where the driver's used to looking anyway, or even better, keeping their eyes on the road. Um, moving along with the infotainment side of things, um, we vend, uh, our customers are the tier ones of the world, um, the OEMs of the world, and we don't necessarily want to dictate how they deliver content or how, how they actually prepare and show their content to, to the end consumer. So this particular platform, uh, we support basically any and all graphics platforms. So if you want to write it in native OpenGL or you want to use HTML5 or Qt or even Android applications on this platform, the iHeartRadio app is an unmodified APK from Google Play that just simply runs on our platform. I wanted to ask you a question about that because I understand QNX has this new program and maybe that's what it is, where you can listen to a station in Los Angeles drive outside the range and it will continue to play. Yep, absolutely. So in, in this particular case, um, what we were doing is um, the radio will have your favorite radio stations on it. And this one, unfortunately, is set for Las Vegas right now, um, but we can talk about the, the use case. Basically, it's I'm driving and I'm in the context of the bull and we're listening to it. And as it, it, as it fails over, because this particular one is also a streaming radio station, it'll fail over to that. And that's, again, speaks to the integration of the platform. Um, unfortunately, it's not something I can demo right here, right now, just because of where we are location-wise. Um, but again, it, it's, it's the seamless nature of that handover. I'm listening to my favorite radio station. I don't want to have to go and look and yeah. switch to the streaming content. I want my, my infotainment system to do that for me. I want to be able to simply drive and listen to my music without that, that high level of interaction and really, you know, that taking that thought process away from the drive to figure out where the streaming content is and select the radio station. I want to be able to do that failover. And that's kind of the, the biggest, um, let's call it the, the, the biggest bang for your buck when it comes to the integration is how, how can I leverage all of these disparate systems in a way that makes the driving experience as seamless as possible? Now, can you talk about briefly how that works? Is that mainly using the data on your cell phone? Um, in this particular case, it's not using the data on the cell phone. Um, it is pulling information from the vehicle, so I understand which radio station I'm on. Um, and I also, uh, I can understand what presets I have, depending on the streaming radio stations, the streaming content that we have. In this case, this demonstration, um, we have a, a, a fairly intimate integration of iHeartRadio. So I know the radio station that I'm on, and I know how to talk to, to iHeart to figure out how do I get to that radio station. So it's the infotainment itself really doing that. But I can pull you know, user information, I can pull presets, I can pull all that type of stuff um, from, a, from a handset to deliver that content through the infotainment system as well. Um, another thing that we have pre-integrated, um, unfortunately I can't show it today, um, but the, you know, the newer CarPlay Android Autos of the world also com completely pre-integrated into our infotainment platform as well today. Oh. Um, that's the whole point of this platform. The, we call it our connected automotive reference platform or our platform for infotainment is to really do the integration of all of the tech that exists today to, to make up a full infotainment system like Navi, like voice, media, broadened devices, things like that, to allow the OEMs and the tier ones to innovate on top of that. So do all of the plumbing, make everything connect and work together, and then allow for, you know, kind of that leap when it comes to production programs. They don't have to necessarily worry about the platform level. Now, obviously they do, and that's there's a lot of um, differentiation in the platform, but we uh, basically take our modules that we sell into the market and we created our own um, integration of them. All right, now currently we're sitting inside a Maserati. Yep. What other cars can we find this on in the future? Um, from a platform perspective, um, We've shipped in about 60 million vehicles since 2000. So a lot of the domestic brands and, and a lot of the, the brands that are fairly popular in the market, um, odds are you've driven something with QNX technology in it today. All right. How soon can we see this technology in the new cars? Um, you're seeing a lot of this stuff today, maybe not as integrated as this, but again, it's building on the modules that exist in, the, in, in market today. Um, you're going to start seeing... Um, digital instrument clusters become more and more prevalent uh, in a lot of makes and models, and it's not necessarily just going to be high-end vehicles. There's going to be a number of OEs that are you know, pushing out digital components uh, for instrument clusters as well as infotainment system through the entire range. 
Um, but look for this type of information and integration for the, in the next year, two years. You're going to see levels of this coming 